Hello and welcome to Business Matters, the show about people behind businesses that help make Tacoma a great place to live and work. I'm your host, Mike Work, and on this edition of Spotlight, it's time to get away right here in Tacoma with short-term neighborhood rentals. On District Focus, we'll walk into a snapshot of a Tacoma district with business charm. And Andrew Fry offers tips to make your business successful on Tacoma Means Business. And today my guests are Tina Pulich and Robert Farley with the lasagna store, pasta, and more. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank you. You, you, you bet. I've been looking forward to this interview because I love lasagna. And I love the concept of your store, which focuses on lasagna and a few other di dishes. So mm -hmm. tell, us, tell us about your business. What, what do we find when we come in the door? Well, aside from the yummy smell. Yeah, garlic, right? <laughs> garlic yes. and sauce. Lots of garlic, lots of seasonings. Mm -hmm. Yes, lots of sauce. Um, our menu has several different lasagnas. Um, we also have pastas, um, spaghettis. We have, uh, uh, so we have meatball sandwiches, mm. um, a wonderful Parmesan sandwich. Mm -hmm. With chicken? Uh, with chicken. Parmesan chicken, mm. yeah. Um, and some desserts. I'm sure it's all good. Now, lasagna, um, some people think about lasagna and they, they're, they're used to that one kind of lasagna, but you have several. Tell me, what are the differences between them? We have a traditional, traditional lasagna mm -hmm. that has sausage in it. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have our traditional that has no meat in it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a vegetarian with spinach. Mm. And the, those are all red sauces. Okay. And then we also have one that is a white sauce chicken lasagna. Mm. It's rich, but it is so silky. It is so smooth. It has a wonderful taste to it. I'm sure they're all delicious. And then you have a few pasta dishes, not a whole huge range. Right. So tell me about those. Uh, we've got some spaghettis with and without meat. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a chicken fettuccine mm -hmm. and a fettuccine alfredo that uh, has no chicken in it. And a wonderful tortellini that oh. has sun-dried tomatoes, spinach, um, and a wonderful white sauce. And you're in a nice little location. People might recognize it as a former Knuckles yeah. uh, mm -hmm. restaurant. And uh, how long have you been there now? We've been there about six weeks now. Okay, so you're just getting going. Yeah. And uh, describe the, um, uh, the restaurant inside. What was, what's the experience there? Some people say it has a lot going on, but I don't think so. It's, <laughs> we have some artists that come in and we display their artwork. Oh, nice. So on a couple of walls we have one artist mm -hmm. and... Uh, their artwork's for sale, and then we have another wall. We have one other artist that displays mm -hmm. their artwork. But it's cozy. It's not real big. And it's not real big. Mm -hmm. We've got five tables. Okay. Um, but it is. It's, it's cozy. It has a very warm feeling mm -hmm. um, and very welcoming when you come in. And the smell, Robert, described that. You greet people as they come in? Oh, absolutely. That's, that's one of the uh, things I enjoy the most is seeing the look on people's faces when they first walk in the door and just take in all the aromas and the smells that the restaurant has to offer, you know. And uh, I, I jokingly apologize for the smell when people <laughs> come in. <laughs> it usually gets a chuckle. But uh, yeah, I, I think my job is more on the marketing end of it too. Okay. You know, as far as our platform on social media, we do a lot of marketing on social media, mm -hmm. things like that, Facebook and so forth. And uh, when I'm at the restaurant, my job is just to greet people, make them feel comfortable, make them feel at home, you know, kind of explain who we are, what we are, what we have to offer. and you know, guide them through the menu. And what's the response been? Oh, the response has been wonderful. People, you know, I think the people were, number one, they were looking for another place on 6th Avenue. Right. You know, because it's, 6th Avenue has kind of become this little mecca in Tacoma where people know that you can go to find a good place to eat. And whenever something new opens up on 6th Avenue, it, you know, kind of gathers the attention of everybody in the community. And, right. You know, we kind of experienced that when we opened our restaurant. That's good to hear. And you identified a niche. Uh, yes, we did. Apparently one that people are really interested in. Good Italian food and takeout. Our business model was always kind of focused more towards the takeout end of it. No kidding. Okay. Yeah. And we probably do what? What do you think, honey? About 70, 80% of our business is takeout? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and part of the niche that we added to that was we have family meals. And one of the things I was real adamant about adding to this business is... You know how back in the day you would go home and you would have lasagna and you'd have salad and you'd pass it around. Mm -hmm. We have our family meals to go with the, the bread salad and the lasagna and it comes in one tray and that's what I want. I want people to either come to the restaurant and have our family meals or take it home, sit down, dish up, pass it around. So you, uh, you have different sizes of trays of lasagna. Yes. So I can come in mm -hmm. and get a hot, fresh lasagna and carry it home? Yeah, mm -hmm. all you have to do is sit down with the table with the family and dish it up and wow. enjoy it. And then there's also a salad, what sort of salad? 
Uh, we have a Caesar salad. Mm -hmm. uh, it has Asiago cheese and croutons on it mm. with a great Caesar dressing. Then we also have a spinach salad that has mm -hmm. feta cheese, cranberries, walnuts, and a, a balsamic vinaigrette. You're making me hungry. <laughs> Ooh, sounds wonderful. And how's and so 80% of your business that took off right away then. That did take off right away. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we recently signed on with Uber Eats, and uh, that's kind of helped take our business to the next level also. So that that's where I can use my Uber app mm -hmm. and you call the store. Nope. Actually, you do it through your application. Oh. You just go ahead and tap on the menu item you're interested in. Okay. And since the, it's the same way that their Uber Ride app is set up, it right. automatically charges your credit card or debit it card. It has all your information and, already in there. So you just click on what you want, it'll give you mm -hmm. the total, and mm -hmm. then it hands it over to Uber. The Uber driver will come pick it up and then deliver it to the door. So I do a few things on my phone, click, mm -hmm. and a driver comes into your restaurant to get the lasagna and salad yeah, mm -hmm. and bread or pasta or whatever it mm -hmm. is, and it shows up at my door. Usually within about 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Everything, How, everything is that made take, fresh. Everything's fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That garlic smell will come wafting into my house with that. Exactly. And one okay. of the things that's kind of unique about us is uh, we, we make everything fresh to order. So, you know, everything's made daily and baked fresh. So if you came into our store and you said, I want to take home a, a family tray, and uh, let's say you wanted the white sauce chicken lasagna, mm -hmm. it goes right into the oven right then and there to be baked fresh. We, it, it doesn't sit around, it doesn't sit in a freezer right. overnight we, and get rewarmed. And it, not, none of that ever happens. So super fresh, unlike yeah. some of the lasagnas you buy in the stores and so forth that right. people like. It, it's made right when you order it, it's baked mm -hmm. right when you order it. You know, mm -hmm. we've had a couple of people ask, you know, well, when was it reheated? Or mm -hmm. it was like, no, it was just made, it was just baked. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because some restaurants will have somebody make their cannelloni or lasagna and they have it on hand. Right, right, right. Uh, so this is just a tremendous business concept, and I'm so glad to hear that it's taking off so quickly. But one of the things I always like to explore uh, with our guests on Business Matters is the decision to jump into this arena. Mm -hmm. um, what motivated you to start this business? Because you both don't, you don't have a restaurant history. Right. right. Well, this goes back to probably when I was about 20 years old. Mm -hmm. um, I have always wanted to have a restaurant. Um, my mother taught me to cook, and uh, all these recipes were passed, passed down from her. Oh. But I kind of, the way I kind of describe it is it's my mom's recipes on steroids. Mm. <laughs> They're very pumped up, and mm -hmm. I've changed them a lot, but it, the basis of it came from my mom's recipes. Adding more flavor, but it's traditional. Right, exactly. Home cooking. Right. Uh, my father had several businesses, and so he taught me a lot about business. And uh, So you had entrepreneurial tendencies built into you from yes. your childhood. Yeah. Um, the doodah birds. Do you remember those from the Puyallup Fair? The glass oh, birds yeah, with yeah. the sand? Mm -hmm. That was my dad. Oh, cool. Yeah. He, so came, he, he actually came up had with businesses. that. Yeah, so that was his for years, and uh, we came up with those in the basement of our house on 24th and Alder. Right. And uh, that's really cool. But you you were commuting for to your jobs, right? Both yes. Really long commutes, like two hours. Yeah. I was driving to North Seattle every day, and we both we live in Fircrest, so right. you can imagine what that wow. must have been like. Yeah. And your commute was. I worked in Renton, so okay. from Fircrest to Renton, so I was at least an hour and a half one way. So you were just in the daily grind, mm -hmm. and you thought there must mm -hmm. be something else to do. Right. Well, we were doing what we thought, you know, what everybody did. Yeah. You know, and Making that was a living, raising your family. Right. right. It was just the norm. What we thought was the norm. You so, somebody else's dream. What motivated you to to make this step? I knew I was getting close to it. Um, the last I had worked at an auto dealership, and the last thing I did at the dealership was uh, payroll. Mm -hmm. And I specifically took that position because I knew. My dream was coming up in a few years, and I needed to know payroll, and I needed to know the laws, and I needed to know taxes, and and all of that. So, um, it our dream actually came a lot sooner than we thought when Robert had his uh, torn aorta back in December. Oh my gosh! Last that's year, that's a very serious condition. Yeah. Yeah. When he originally went in, he had an eighty percent chance to make it through surgery. That was going to be about four to six hours, which when they got in there, it quickly changed that he had a three percent chance of making it. And the tear was a lot more significant than they thought. That's very scary. Yeah. So it was four months in the hospital, um, you know, almost dying several times, his heart stopping, uh, liver failure, kidney failure. You know, just it was the list went on of the yeah. things. So it quickly changed our outlook on life. Um, How so? What, what exactly? Um, the dreams that I wanted seemed like they were more reachable. Mm -hmm. The fear went away. The fear of starting your own business. Right. Mm -hmm. The fear of doing a lot of things mm -hmm. went away. Um, 
we, we realized that we weren't living our lives before mm -hmm. and we were passing each other maybe for a minute daily mm. and never spent any time together. So it so you decided to um, embark on this entrepreneurial quest yeah. together. Yeah. Yes. So I quit my job in August and we went full force. So it, August and you opened the doors in? Uh, late October. Yep. Wow. How, how was that period of time for you? It was exciting and it, it was, was really fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just, everything has kind of felt like it's meant to be. Yeah. Like we were doing what we should, should be doing. That is such a great story. Um, and then, and tell me, okay, you did all this preparation, you found the location, you outfitted the restaurant, you perfected your, men, uh, your menus, you developed your marketing strategy, mm -hmm. but one day was opening day. Yes. Tell me about that. It was exciting. I yeah. couldn't wait. I couldn't wait for opening day to be there. Um, you know, we open the doors and it's like anybody else. It's like, is anybody going to come today? <laughs> <laughs> they came? And they came and yeah. they loved it. And it's just been a dream ever since. That's really great. Yeah. So given your experience, having such a disruptive experience, um, and you, you look awfully healthy to me, Thank so it's you. hard to believe um, that, that you One endured, had to endure that a year ago. Um, what advice do you have for others who may be thinking about getting into entrepreneurship um, and oh, making that leap? Don't let the fear take over. You know, just go for it. Don't let that fear keep you down and, you know, that negativity of you can't do it. It, it shed away so fast. It was just like, it felt natural, like I said, and just felt like this was easy to do. And once you decide to do it and you jump into it, you know, there's always the unknown. You never know what's going to happen. But You know, it's kind of like the old saying, every journey begins with a single step. And, you know, your dream is the same way. You've got to take that step forward. Eventually, at some point, you've got to make that decision, take that step and go for it. You know, and like she said, you've got to find what motivates you mm -hmm. at the end of the day, because for each of us, that's something different. And this, in our case, it was a life-changing event, you know, but uh, once you identify what that is, what that one thing is, go ahead and act on it. You know, don't wait around because your dreams aren't going to wait for you, you know, and there's no guarantee for tomorrow. And you're living your dream. And we're living our dream. And it's we are. lasagna. And, and it is, yes. And happy people coming in the door. So we're almost out of time, but uh, anything in the future we should be looking forward to from, from oh, your store? There's phase two and three. Okay. Definitely. So, but it's mysterious, mystery at this time. Um, no. Um, is it at other locations or so, expanding? Well, phase two, we're going to revamp the menu. We're going to add some more stuff. Okay. Um, you know, change up a few things, but we're also going to like jar our sauces, have our noodles for sale. Um, okay. More grab and go where you can okay. get, get seasonings, you know, that type of thing. Great. So there's more to come, more takeout, richer menu. It's all going to be yes. fabulous. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to my first lasagna at your place. Thanks for being our guest today on Business Matters. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Us. Coming up, we'll visit a Tacoma business district with a fresh focus on economic enterprise. Connecting people to business is what Tacoma is all about. Known as the birthplace of Tacoma, the Old Town Business District is packed with local charm and opportunities. I'm Ruth Delanius, president of the Old Town Business District. Welcome to Old Town. Old Town Business District is um, important because Tacoma started here. That's the information we have on our banners and this is where Tacoma started and that's the part of what makes us special. There are about 110 businesses in our district with about 65 members. The Business District tries to unite the interests of all the businesses for a voice in city activities and services. We have about 90% residential and 10% businesses in our overall district. The businesses range from large waterfront eateries to small executive professional offices. We have attorneys, dentists, coffee shops, hair salons, venues for events, property management office, insurance agencies, and a language school. About 10, 11 years ago, they did, they had different salmon throughout the city of Tacoma, and our salmon, sole salmon, um, was taken held hostage for 10 years and then he was returned to us this year. So we've got a, him on a new base that's secure. He won't be going anywhere. And uh, we got to unveil him again. Last year we completed a long-term goal of getting business district banners up. 
Um, we chose a local artist who's able to depict four important parts of our business district. The tall ships, the early fishing and lumber industry, and the joke card cabin. Our district wants to build on a very successful summer concert series in the park, our classical Tuesday concert series, and uh, we also want to be involved in the Old Town Blues Festival. We hope to eliminate some of our commercial vacancies and onward and upward. For more information on Tacoma Business, log on to experiencetacoma.com. Coming up on Tacoma Means Business, Andrew Fry provides advice on how to make your small business a success. Success in business requires commitment from owner to staff. In this edition of Tacoma Means Business, Andrew Fry helps identify what's required to succeed in today's small business world. As a small business and one that you're trying to grow, obviously, Revenue is a singularly important thing to you and therefore you want to bring in as many customers as you can. Now there's a danger in that and one of the hardest things you're going to want to do because that money is so important to bring in is actually fire some of your customers. Well there are four types of customers that you might want to consider letting go and severing ties with because they're actually doing more harm to your business. So the first one is the one who bullies. The one who feels that their business is so much bigger and so much more important than the service you're providing that they will call and yell or complain and push your staff and you during the course of that. It's a, it's a dynamic in a relationship. Don't put up with a bully. In my years that I was working in doing web design and, and development, once or twice we'd have a company that would feel as though they could dictate everything that we were doing, even though we'd have 55, 60 clients. And if they're treating your employees poorly, your employees aren't even going to want to come into work. If that's happening, don't put up with a bully. Finish the work, turn it over, and get rid of them. It'll help you out. The other one is actually the time sink. Um, the customer who loves you and loves your work and always wants a little bit more or has a question several times a day. They can be great people and a lot of times these are small companies or the companies that don't necessarily have the budget for what you're doing and so they're going to squeeze that last bit out of you in order to make certain that every dime that they've spent is put to the best use. Now this isn't necessarily an adversarial relationship but you will need to ask yourself at some point in time how much care and feeding do, do I and my employees have to give this customer? And are we getting back in revenue what they're asking? Uh, the third one is the nickel and dimer. They're different than the time sink. The time sink is really just taking all your time, asking the questions, um, constantly tying up your communications line. The nickel and dimer is the one who's going to squeeze every last penny and make late payments. 47% of small business customers don't pay their invoices on time. And they leverage that to get more and more out of you. If you can identify one of your customers who is a nickel and dimer, go with the customers you have the stronger relationship with, where the value is both ways, where the solutions that you're providing is of greater value to them than what they're paying you, and you want to continue working together. The fourth category is one that kind of goes against the maxim of the customer is always right. You should try to adhere to this because what you don't do want to have is customer satisfaction. But there are some people that cannot be pleased, that there are no pleasing them, and they're gonna go online and complain. Now, online reviews are a great reflective process to see what it is that you can do better. And oftentimes, if you get an online review that is not positive, you go back to that customer and you say, we're sorry that you had that experience. What can we do better next time? And is there anything that we can do to help you? And that's great. But there are quite a few customers and people who will never be satisfied and they will continue to make those negative reviews. Cut them off no longer serve them as a customer, they are not good for your business. You want people coming in, you want that revenue. 
But keep in mind that if someone's bullying you, if taking up all your time, if they are nickel and diming you, and if they are just constantly complaining, you are better off sticking with the customers who are a better fit. Thanks, Andrew. For more information on Tacoma Means Business, log on to makeittacoma.com. When Business Matters returns, short-term residential living is the focus on this month's In the Spotlight. Today in the Spotlight, we'll visit a fun yet funky short-term rental business in Tacoma 6th Avenue Business District. Hello, my name is Angela Sienda, and I'd like to welcome you to the 6th Avenue Goddess. The 6th Avenue Goddess is more than a home or office. It's a business featuring two completely furnished apartments nestled at the head of the 6th Avenue Business District. The 6th Avenue Goddess has two short-term rentals. It has the Venus apartment and the Aphrodite apartment. And they're both uh, uniquely different from each other, but they embody the 1920s uh, glamour. Angela's business plan involves providing a comfortable living for guests, either vacationing or short-term housing, surrounded by the arts, culture, food, and entertainment of 6th Avenue. Basically, the 6th Avenue Goddess rents out two short-term rentals to people visiting Tacoma. Uh, a lot of times I have people that are former Tacomans and people visiting our great city, so it, it really accommodates all types of travelers. Angela fell in love with the building and immediately wrapped herself around the elegance of the classic 1920s architecture. One thing I loved about this property when I purchased the property was all the great unique details. There's crown molding, uh, hardwood floors, built-ins and the way this house was designed back in 1920 it was really a great use of space for uh, for people to live here. Angela enjoys dressing up the spaces to give them a very distinctive niche in the market. I have had four Airbnb rentals in the past and what I really liked about the Airbnb experience was I was able to decorate the house the way I wanted to and to share the culture of the neighborhood and also all the great features. But in addition to that, I like the ability to come in and check on my, my property. Akin to having a dollhouse, you're able to decorate and fix it up. A special icon built into the house was enough to launch her artistic juices. She knew she had something going with the term creative license and took things from there. I came up with the, the Sixth Avenue Goddess because there was a goddess head on the columns of the house. And since I couldn't find any history at the library, I decided to invent a history. And I came up with an Art Nouveau goddess picture that I really loved. I brought it to the Ironworks and he came up with a wonderful design. He put it in the fence, he put it in the gate, and he also put it in the railing of the house. Angela's previous experience with short-term rentals helped her develop her business strategies based on customer satisfaction and online reviews. So Airbnb and VRBO rate the uh, experience that the customer has. I have a five-star rating, and what that means is, is I'm being rated by my customers on value and also on their experience. Her customers provide feedback used by Angela to help attract future bookings to the 6th Avenue Goddess, which also adds to the local economy. I feel like I'm bringing customers in because they are frequenting the uh, shops in the area as well as eating at the restaurants and they're experiencing the culture and they're experiencing what I truly love about Tacoma which is the rich eclectic nature and the vibrancy of 6th Avenue. A small business requires an independent owner to think big on a needle fine budget. Angela made many changes with money saving results. Right now I employ myself. I am doing all the cleaning I also do the decorating and the yard work. And so I did uh, a lot of scraping, sanding, stripping of paint, and really everything that goes into renovation of a house. Angela says she doesn't have a crystal ball to see into the 6th Avenue Goddess's future, but she does have some immediate plans on making the property even better. People are happy. They're, they're running quite well. I have plans to spend more time and money in the garden and um, the front yard is looking really good since I put the fence up and I do have a space in the basement it's 
commercial, so I may have my own business or I may rent that out as well. Angela's website and her investments in her business are all focused on Tacoma. Tacoma is an amazing city. Now, Sixth Avenue's changed a lot. I've lived in this area for approximately 25 years and I've seen the renewal and the regeneration and I love it. So I really hope to give back to the community as much as I've been uh, receiving. That's it for Business Matters. Join me next time for more insight into the Tacoma business scene. See you then.